Hey folks, so in this video we're going to be looking at a couple of modifications that came with version 2.7 of the plugin. One of them is enabling 360 degree movement using the thumbstick or thumb pad of your motion controllers, as well as what well, you could see here um, being able to climb hills or go through them or basically an even terrain, and also enabling gravity in the VR pawn. So let's get started. We'll start with a simple landscape. We'll create a landscape here with a bit of an uneven terrain so that we have somewhere to move on and just see how the, the pawn reacts to the uneven terrain. Okay, I'm going to make a really small one here. So 7x7 seven seven quads and the rest should be fine. Create that and just roughly draw some stuff here. Let's create some unevenness around the pawn. Player start. All right, that looks good. Save it and let's look at this. Set it to zero so it doesn't. Hit our pawn there. Let's have a look. Yep, that should be good. All right, so let's start coding. First thing we're going to do is add the VR movement component. There, and I'll show you the new node. It's called Enable 360 Movement. So what this node does is it allows you to freely move around in 360 degrees, uh, very responsive to thumbsticks. So that's what um, the node is meant for, so for thumbstick um, input, so in the Vive controller, so when you put your thumb on on top of the um, thumb pad and then just um, move it around, so y the pawn would move around according to the direction of where your thumb is in the thumb pad. In the Oculus, um, Oculus Touch controller, if you use this node, um, it's where your um, pointing the thumbsticks at. So the it responds to the thumbsticks in the Oculus Touch and similar to the Vive controller, it moves the um, pawn to um, in a full 360 movement. So um, complete free freedom of movement within 360 degrees. And the direction on the different axes, you can lock as well. So pitch, yaw, and roll, similar to the standard enable VR movement here. So you can use either or both of these mechanics at the same time if you want to. And yeah, so this is not, uh, not my favorite um, movement mechanic because um, I feel that it give, introduces a lot of sim sickness, but it's, I've been getting a lot of requests uh, for an implementation for this. So a shout out to Freme for the U4 forums for um, pointing out the um, pointing this uh, mechanic out and yeah, and then introducing the some of the base calculations that I've done in the C++ code to get this working um, for you guys. So it's up to you how you want to use it. So you have now the option and yeah, so just uh, ensure that you tweak it a little bit so that it doesn't introduce sim sickness to your end users. All right. So you've got movement speed there that you probably might want to tweak. Okay, so the input, how do we use this? We just use motion controller. I'm gonna, it has to be an event. I'm going to use the left one, so left motion controller thumbstick X and the left motion controller event thumbstick Y. There you go. So we're going to use those two axes. There. X and Y, plug them in. Of course, there's a far more polished way of doing this, but for something quick, this should be good enough for a demo, and we're going to have the motion controller left so that you could quickly see what it can do. So with this, with that simple setup, you now could do that full 360 movement um, using your thumb pad or the thumbstick and the Oculus Touch, and it will respond to the movements here. All right, so now we have the ability to move the pawn uh, with just a couple of nodes there. 
Now we want the pond as well to respond to this uneven terrain that we've created here. How do we do that? To do that, you need to enable gravity. So I think I've already have it set up here. I'll just disable that. Um, by default, the pond doesn't have um, gravity, but or the gravity isn't enabled, as it does take um, resources. But if you want to have gravity for your pond for your um, experience, then you could just enable it here. And if you then also want to make it respond to uneven terrain as well, uh, you can take that in there. So now you have both gravity and even and a response to uneven terrain. The thing is, you need gravity for the response to uneven terrain to work. So, you, but you can have gravity alone um, without the response to uneven terrain. So, all right. So. For this demo, we're going to use bo both. So we're going to have gravity and respond to uneven terrain. So this is not a valid configuration, so it will do nothing. It won't have, because gravity is required for the uneven terrain. But for this demo, we're going to be using both, OK? So I hope I didn't confuse you there. But anyways, the gravity and respond to uneven terrain, they have to be both enabled for the un response to uneven terrain to work. The You've got a couple of other stuff in here. So you've got gravity strength. So how strong the gravity is. So the tree is there by default, but you can tweak it. Um, floor trace range is how far um, the trace is. So what actually happens here is um, it goes through the, it finds a camera for the spawn and then does a trace towards the floor. So a ray cast towards the floor. And if it finds um, that the Z value is and the distance between the ray trace is different than this one then if it's less than that so then it um, moves upon upwards so just to make it respond to the terrain so you can tweak that to change it um, uh, depending on your experience and you've got the floor trace tolerance so what this value does is this is the amount that needs to be um, different. So from the floor trace range, let's say it's 150. I do a ray cast from the camera to um, the floor and 150. If the trace and the trace distance ends up with 140, for example, so that's b that's 10. That's a difference of 10. 150 minus 140 is 10. So it hits the tolerance, so then it moves it by 10 units. If it, if it's for, uh, for example, 149, then it won't move um, because you have a tolerance here of three, three. So you can also tweak this depending on your experience. So if you put this too low, though, um, just a warning, you might get um, just because of how floats are. Um, in programming, uh, uh, it you might get a bit of a jittery movement, so it kind of feels like you're moving up and down, even though the surface is a little bit quite level. So you need to tweak this. But three as a default should be fine, and you can also change the gravity direction. So you've got um, at the moment negative one, so it falls down. So negative one in Z, the Z axis. So it's up to you then to, you could use a custom gravity if you want to. So the option is available for you. All right, so um, that's pretty much it. And let's give this baby a whirl. All right, so now we should be able to move around this scene and be able to walk as well. As you could see here, I can climb up hills, walk up them and just basically move around here freely using the 360 degree movement and also be able to fall. And there you have it. So we've been able to go through um, 360 degree movement using the thumbstick or the thumb pad of your motion controllers and also um, have the pond respond to uneven terrain and enable gravity on the pond, which um, kind of works hand in hand together. All right, so I hope that was useful, guys. And any questions, just hit me up in the UE4 forums or um, send me an email. All right, see you guys then. Cheers. Mm -hmm.